little snack celebration. Empty wrappers. Couple hash browns, you know. Dodge Dakota. Hash browns. They all fell out. We got someone in the back. Rosie's here. Back for hash browns. Got those egg and cheese wraps. No meat. I don't know. Sometimes. So. Dodge Dakota. Piece of junk. You guys. Before you even heard that it even ran. You were saying the thing was mint. Well. It's only on video. I guess you can't really can't blame you. Can't see too much real life. But. Not mint condition. No way. Always reason why the broken dreams got to be disposed of. I had the pleasure of talking to a friend of mine that was the mechanic for this truck. The truck's right on the back, by the way. Almost to the junkyard. And uh, I asked him, what's going on? They say there's no oil. Don't start it. This and that. Well... He did confirm that on the other side to where I was looking, you had to, it was almost hard to see, but on the um, side of the oil pan, he said it was all rotted. And at one time, it leaked all of its oil out. And then I guess after a while, it was using like, you know, a quart of oil and now and then, you know, leaking it out. But I guess the rust kind of congealed around and it was only just seeping after a while. So they got by with it. But he did a lot of work to the truck. It was always needing something. Let me show you something. Live a little bit, you know? Come on. So he did a lot of work to it over the years. And, uh... They wanted him to do some work to it. Oil change and some other small things. Some maintenance, but... Um, recently, well, I guess um, probably like before Christmas time, and uh, so he did, and he told them, he said, hey, you know, getting a little rusty under there, oil pan's getting worse, transmission pan's rusty, um, it's going to need ball joints, it's going to need a wheel bearing, um, Gonna need tie rod ends. Gonna need a lot of stuff. So they said, okay. So 
And then they were driving it. And they said, no, don't worry about it. You drive it every day. 100 miles an hour on the interstate. So the lady says uh, one day, oh, had to have it towed home, broke down. Uh, won't move. Transmission won't do anything. Well, transmission pan had a rot hole in the bottom. Leaked all its fluid out. So, who knows how long they tried to drive it and roast out the transmission with no fluid. So they said to him, hey, need you to fix this. He said, listen, it needs too much work. And these people, you know, didn't really want to spend a lot of money on stuff. So they said, well, we want to do the oil pan and the transmission pan. That's it. So you can't do that because in order to do the oil pan he said I'm not taking the engine out and you either have to take the engine out to do it or drop the front end all the suspension out of the way and everything so he said now if I drop the front end then he said I'm going to have to do all that stuff you know all those front end parts I got to take it all apart I'm not going to take out old bushings and, and knock off old tie rods and all that stuff and not replace it because once you take it off you know it's going to get all it's all corroded, it's all cracked, stuff's going to break, stuff's going to rip, you know, it's, you got to put all that stuff back in new, and they said, well, we don't want to spend that kind of money on it, and he said, well, I guess that's it, so that's when your favorite truck and your ride every day becomes a broken dream, because you draw the line, you don't want to put all that money, or you don't have all the money to put into it, so what are you going to do? Truck's undrivable. Truck gets parked. Then is when the sadness starts because it sits in front of your house. You got to look at it. Every time you get a ride to the store, to the pharmacy, to the doctor, to the hospital, you see your old truck sitting there. Can't drive it. It's junk. So that's when it's time to call me and get rid of it. So, you know, you might sit there at home, watch the video and say, man, this guy's an idiot. Like this truck, like you could do this and that and you could sell it for, you know, two, three thousand dollars. Well, reality, someone really loved that truck. And they had some money to put into it. Could you have fixed a couple things and kept driving it? Absolutely. But when you got question marks on transmission, what am I going to do? I'm going to get a new pan for it, put it on, fill it with fluid, take it for a ride, realize it slips, realize it's burnt out. And then after that, let's say it's good. Well, you got a 4.7 B8 piece of junk, not a good reputation. Then after that, you got wheel bearings, you got tie rod ends, you got ball joints. You got a truck that's eh, really not that nice. Eh, body uh, appears to be okay. It's all rotted above the rear wheels. What are you going to do about that? You can't get a sticker up here like that. 
So now you got to fix that, or you got to get some flares, or you got to do something. You know, so you got to look at all those things. And uh, with me, it's easier to do what I can, sell what I can off of it, take the tires and the wheels off, try to sell those, take some small parts off, whatever, see if somebody needs something, and uh, scrap it, make my profit, and move on to the next. So, not to uh, try to be in defense and, you know, explain myself like that, but that's the true reality of it. And, uh, you know, there's always going to be people that say, man, why would you do that? That is, uh, I would kill to have that truck, you know? I would love to have it. There's lots of people who would love to have that truck, and I... You're not wrong, you know, but it's the situation, and that's what's got to be done, so.
Not a big celebration, that's for sure. It's weird the way the market goes. Nuggets for Rosie. You know I got the chili. You know I got those bacon pub fries. Well, yeah, so before we were dealing with uh, low prices on the metal itself over the scale, but cap prices were high. Lemonade, it's good here. So now we're the other way around. Cap prices have dropped, but the price of metal has gone up. So you can't win anywhere, you know, it doesn't really equal out. Looks good today. Could be hotter, but I guess we can deal with it. I got a call into um, the guy who's also a friend of mine that owns the junkyard. He wasn't there, but I think his price on the cat off that Dakota was a little low. Real strips of bacon on here, boys. Two different kinds of cheese. We got a pub cheese, like a like a beer cheese almost. It's like a sauce on the uh, natural cut fries, which are nice and fresh. And then some uh, cheddar, melted, bacon, man, it's good. So, the guy that was working, I had to call him up, get a price on the cap, but priced it very quickly. And you never even seen it. It's just glare here. Get rid of that. And it seemed pretty low to me. He said, oh yeah, all those Dodge Dakotas suck. I said, well, My experience, yes, Dodgers are not very good, but the uh, the V6 ones usually they got that 37 V6. Those ones I know really suck, but this had the 47 V8, as you know. Big heavy cat with a number plate on it and everything. I said, I think you're mistaken. He said, oh, no. Those suck, so... I called the guy up after. I said, I think, uh, you know, I just want to double check. With you, and uh, he said, oh, yeah. He said, uh, cap prices are down pretty low but he said I can double check that number for you when I get back to the yard 
So, hopefully, he rechecks it, which I know it's not right, but in the business like that, you know, you got to move quick and you're always busy doing something. So, I can understand how it's just like, you know, push it through, but when you're somebody doing high volume, a lot of cars, you know, maybe it doesn't matter that much, but when you're a guy like me, I just turn and burn on each car, trying to make as much as I can, much profit. It matters to me, every dollar. So, there has been times where prices have been off a little bit. Um, but he was good about it, fixed it, took care of me, so not worried about it. Not a huge profit. The um, the price of the weight has gone up, though, like I said. So that truck weighed about 4,500 pounds. So it brought... Um, almost 400 bucks just for the junk truck itself and uh, cap price is left, left to be determined but I get a little more now because I'm a regular and I bring them cars from way way up I go 90 miles so he appreciates that appreciates my business and me being loyal for you know, years. So, works out pretty good. Someone commented on my gold bracelet. One person, in the last video, it's not real gold. If it was, I'd be cashing it in. I found it under the back seat of a Buick. Ah. Uh, at Buick Lucerne. Yep. I put it on as a joke, and my wife and daughter said, you know, that looks good. That's a good look on you. Well, I thought that was kind of funny. Now I just wear it every day. Oh man, that's good. So I got the four pretty much brand new tires on the wheels on the trailer sitting right there. Brought them home. So you can look at it a couple of different ways. probably list those for 300 bucks end up taking two um, so you can you know look at it one way look at it like a like a bonus where I mean at this point I've already made profit and those wheels and tires and anything else that I took off of that truck, such as the radio and stuff like that, battery, it's all free. You can look at it like that and say, that's just free stuff. I mean, someone just gave me that for free, so it stands me no money. Whatever I get with it, what I, I said, whatever I get for it, or if I keep it, look at it like that. But you can also look at it as a constant profit making so I could keep going say well I got this much profit on that Dakota right now I sell those tires and wheels I add that on to that profit I'm still working for that truck you see what I'm saying so 
however way you want to look at it, his profit anyway. So, on to the next. Not looking to get rich. Looking to have a little fun. Take a ride. Some chili. Rosie takes a ride. Make a little profit. We can pay some bills and uh, live a little bit, you know? That's it. Still here. Still sticking with me. Diehards. Stayed right to the end. Listen to this guy talk. Watch him eat. I appreciate it. Fun fact you might not know. You know how long I've been making YouTube videos? It wasn't yesterday. 2009. January? I think 2009. First YouTube video I ever put up. something for you to do. Go find that video. Watch it. Come back here. Well, comment on that. On that first video. And then come back here and put another comment. I don't really know. You're a diehard. I got over 6,000 subscribers, which is nothing to, uh, compared to a lot of, you know, YouTube channels, but still here. Sixty four hundred or something subscribers, but yeah. Only get like 300 views on a video. Once in a while, it's a little more, but it's weird. How many people subscribed? I mean, they all die? Subscribe to it, but you don't watch it? I don't know. Put some of that in your pocket. <laughs> Tuck that away, right there. Some pub fries. Got anything to say back there? Hey, yeah, just see your eye and your ear. Like these?
Again, I don't make her sit in the back, but she just likes to sit back there. Got her own windows. And, I don't know. It's just the way it is. Yeah. Ruin. Beard is ruined. <laughs> 